Hello, my name is Nick with Finishing Technologies here today to talk about the Process 2 unit, startup, and basic maintenance. Hey there, I'm Nick, the Service and Repair Manager at Finishing Technologies. Today we're going to go over some operational and basic maintenance on the Process 2 unit. A quick note, there are some people in the studio with us today who I may refer to off camera. Let's get into it. At the beginning of every shift, first you will plug the unit in, turn on the air compressor, pressurize the pressure tank, and load paint. The pressure pot should be set roughly at 5 to 7 psi fluid pressure to start and work up from there depending on paint viscosity and flow characteristics. With the electrostatics and control unit off, you will want to purge all of the solvent from the system through the paint line out through the feed tube. Once all of the solvent has been purged from the system, you can install the bell, position your feed tube, and brush at the correct positions. Install the bell. Tighten the set screw to attach the bell to the barrel. Position the feed tube and brush. Positioning of the Ransberg feed tube and brush assembly is specific to the size of the bell. With a two and three quarter inch bell, the feed tube should be roughly at the two o'clock position up here and the brush off to the side in the direction that the bell rotates. The feed tube on this size bell, which is a four inch, should be at four to five o'clock. You'll have to pull the tube slightly forward, rotate to that position, make sure it does not make contact with the inside of the bell. That is proper adjustment. Small gap on the inside. For the brush, rotate the gun over. The brush does not make contact with the bell when all the way in. Pull out slightly, push in. Test by rotating the bell to make sure it doesn't lose contact during rotation. The bell and the brush should be making contact on the black, not on the white non-conductive surface, but on the black conductive surface. It is important to remember with the Process 2 unit that the control unit and cart assembly needs to be a minimum distance of 20 feet from the spray area. The applicator is the only component allowed within 20 feet of the spray area. Standard hose and cable lengths are 25 and 36 foot. Additional hose lengths are available upon request and need to be installed by a factory certified service center. Prior to painting with the Process 2 unit, it is important to inspect your grounds to make sure the unit is operating safely. The control unit ground wire meets a lug on the side of the unit. The natural earth ground connection needs to be attached directly to a natural earth ground. Supplied with the Process 2 unit is the part ground. One end of the connection is not supplied. The operator needs to supply whatever endpoint is best suited to make a solid connection to what you're painting. This ground should be attached to a natural earth ground. This can be a large rack which is bolted to the ground. This could be a cold water pipe. Sometimes the building's ground rod is accessible. If you are painting a fence or post, these are typically self-grounded because they are footed to the ground. These grounds need to be separate. They cannot be attached to the same ground point for proper operation. The pressure tank on the Process 2 unit is grounded through the metal cart frame which requires these ground connections to be tight. This allows back charge through the fluid line to be dissipated through the natural earth ground that the cart is attached to. The person operating the equipment needs to be grounded at all times with direct skin contact to the gun handle. 
This means the operator should never wear gloves that prevent that grounding contact. Special electrostatic gloves are available. Please contact us for more information. Additionally supplied with the unit is a circuit tester. The circuit that the unit is plugged into needs to be wired properly and should be tested prior to hooking up the unit. It is important to remember that the unit needs to be 20 feet minimum away from the spray area at all times. The spray gun is the only component allowed to be within the spray area. During operation of the Process 2 unit, it is critical for the operator to remain grounded at all times. The operator is grounded through direct skin contact of the handle of the Process 2 gun. If wearing gloves is a must, then special conductive gloves are offered. Please contact us for details. This is critical for safety with any electrostatic system. Start by turning on the power supply with the switch in the off position on the back of the applicator. After approximately one minute, the system will do a boot up systems check that allows for this system to be turned on safely without creating any boot faults. On the back of the gun is an on off switch for turning on the electrostatics. With newer model units, when the unit is turned on, if the gun switch is flipped too soon, you will get a boot fault. On older units, they did not have this feature and you could start up without waiting for the power supply to do internal diagnostic checks. We strongly recommend that you wait that minute prior to activating the gun or an alarm may show on the faceplate. When you are ready to spray with the Process 2 unit, you will turn on the switch located on the back of the gun. After the trigger is pulled, a valve is open that allows paint to flow to the fluid tube. The fluid tube dispenses the paint inside the bell, which allows the rotational force of the bell to fling the paint to the edges where it is electrostatically charged. There is a slight delay after pulling the trigger before paint reaches the edge of the bell. Most of the time, the paint is not visibly seen going to the part, but just appears on the substrate. At six to eight inches away from the surface to be painted, you will do parallel strokes or semicircles. With parallel strokes, you can do up to a 50% overlap on your passes. With a circular motion, there is no overlap required. After releasing the trigger, the operator should still maintain painting strokes for at least five to 10 seconds as paint is still in the bell being attracted to the edge. Common failures with the Process 2 unit is cable failures, indicated by a cable fault on the power supply. Cable failures tend to happen when the cable gets kinked or is put at a hard angle on the back or on the side of the control unit. Best practice is to avoid kinking the cable and keep it as straight as possible during operation. When you are done spraying or going to take a break, turn the power supply off, holster the gun. If stopping for more than five minutes, you will need to clean the bell. At the end of every job, the equipment should be cleaned. Electrostatics and power needs to be off to the power supply, feed tube in, paint removed, and proper solvent like xylene or toluene used to flush the equipment. Ransberg bells should not be submerged in solvent at any time. They should be wiped down with a rag or a soft bristle brush. The two pieces which make up the bell can be unhooked from each other for cleaning. When you're done, carefully snap the tabs back in place, being sure that the black side is facing outward this can also be a good time to inspect the outside of the bell for scratches or chips in the black conductive coating. Replace the bell if wear is noticed. When cleaning the Process 2 gun, it is important not to soak the gun or any components in any solvent. Approved solvents like xylene and toluene can be used to wipe down the gun with a damp rag, but never put direct solvents on the gun barrel or any of the components. Some basic maintenance items to look for on this unit are going to be the lid gasket, 
which tends to shrink over time and could cause a hiss and a pressure loss. Additionally, the hose at this point tends to kink, causing a loss of fluid pressure. The pickup stem and 90 degree elbow fitting tend to build paint buildup over a number of years, restricting paint flow. On the Process 2 gun, there is an inline filter assembly that needs to be cleaned and flushed at the end of every use. To inspect, clean, or replace the inline fluid filter, it's important to remember the fitting here from the hose and the fitting here threaded onto the back of the gun are left hand threads. To loosen and remove, you must loosen first one of the hose fittings. Being left hand thread, you would spin the opposite direction threads of the filter housing assembly are standard threads. Little bits of debris can build up on that filter and from time to time need cleaned or replaced. If this fitting ever leaks, what causes the seal is the filter. It is not possible to run with this filter housing and not use a filter. The black plastic of the filter creates a seal when it is compressed. New filters will require a little bit more force than ones that have previously been tightened. When it's time to replace the brush and tube, to remove, rotate and rotate as you pull slightly. Sometimes the o-ring gets a little paint built up and can be a little stiff. Careful not to break the tube by angling it as you pull. The brush is the same. Rotate it to break it loose. Rotate while pulling outward. Prior to replacing or reusing, look at the o-ring and look for cracking, drying, or breakage. Also, on the brush, there is a little ball. If that ball is worn more than 50% or is completely gone, it is time to replace the brush. The wire on a brush should never make contact with the bell, only the little conductive dot on the tip. Feed tube, also look at the o-ring, evaluate it. If you see wear from the bell rotation on the feed tube and the feed tube has any sign of damage, it should be replaced. To reinstall, insert rotating all the way in, rotate inward, the brush all the way in, rotate inward, slightly off the center, two fingers on the center of the bell as you push it on. Prior to spraying with a unit, on a regular basis, the end of the high voltage cable should be inspected to make sure it is not arced, having any black charring, and has dielectric grease coating the end. We're not going to talk about any maintenance inside the control panel because no, no one should ever get inside there besides factory service. As always, Finishing Technologies is here to assist with any questions you may have about your process to equipment or any other paint equipment. We are also a factory authorized service and repair center and can offer in-person training when necessary. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Our number is on the screen. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this informational video was helpful and I'll see you later.